Well, hello and welcome to The Shallow Proclamation. My name is Paul. And I'm Thomas. And we are continuing our watch through of Doctor Who from 1963 onwards. Uh, we're into season three of the classic era now. Um, we've recently watched Galaxy 4, the first story. Really enjoyed it, actually. Felt like quite a change of direction and kind of tone for the series, but um, really enjoyed it. Um, and we're about to delve into Mission to the Unknown. We'll talk about that in a second. Into um, the unknown! <laughs> <laughs> Um, do let us know what you think of Thomas's singing down in the comments um, <laughs> or the episode and give us a like and subscribe. That's good. I was about to say, Thomas, that actually I was just um, before I rushing to get here for this recording. I was trying to get everything back in the cupboard from the kitchen. And then this fell out of the cu kitchen cupboard. And I realized that we have a Dalek gun just in the, <laughs> <laughs> in the kitchen. So, uh, you know, just say behave yourself. OK. Um, <laughs> Don't use um, it too much. It will become a, a part of your arm. <laughs> yeah. And then it's a slippery slope from there. <laughs> um, yeah, so Mission to the Unknown. Um, this is a one-part story. Um, it's the only one-part story in the classic series, apart from The Five Doctors, but that's a feature-length kind of special. Um, it was broadcast on the 9th of October, 1965, directed by Derek Martinus, written by Terry Nation. And um, there's no... Um, there is no actual sort of footage uh, that exists from this at all. Um, wow. Yeah, so it's one of three stories from the 1960s, the others being Marco Polo and The Massacre, uh, which exist only as audio recordings. Um, and there's not mm. one frame of footage known to survive anywhere. Um, also, I think, as is the case with a lot of Series 3, there's not even sort of many photos knocking around in reality. Um and I know some people have picked me up on it. I think we've started to say almost automatically when we see pictures in reconstructions, we call them tele snaps, but they're not necessarily tele snaps taken from the screen. They may be production shots and things like that. So, you sure. know, um, but it's just become a sort of um, offhand way of referring to it. Um, so there's not a lot of material for this season and certainly not for these stories. Um, now, I did say at the end of the last reaction that I'd watched the animation of this. Um, and I hadn't realized that the animation wasn't an official animation. It had been kind of crowdfunded by a guy called Ian Levine, who's kind of known in Doctor Who circles. And I I don't really know how to explain who Ian Levine is. So maybe people in the comments could just fill Thomas in on who yeah, Ian Levine yeah. is. That's the easiest way. Um, so I'd watched that animation before and found it very good. But actually, we're going to watch the um, version that was the remade version made by the University of uh, Central Lancashire, I think it was. Um, a few years ago it was someone's kind of basically their film project um where they were able to kind of recreate this and they were they tried to recreate the story i believe using the sort of same techniques and kind of equipment and you know the things they would have had in the actual 60s to make it as authentic as possible um so yeah in a sense i don't want to i don't want to say too much about it because they're you know once you've seen it you'll have a better idea of what's going on a little bit interesting just one quick question are you sure it's the university of lancashire because last time you said lincoln and yes. someone picked well someone picked me up on that i'm pretty sure it is uh yeah it is uclan central lancashire and the reason i keep saying lincoln i did the person who pulled me up on that i did say in the comments the reason i keep thinking of it's lincoln is because there's a video it's been around for years now where someone from the university of lincoln they did like a fake university of lincoln promo video and right. it's all these all these students going, you know, it's got a bit of Lincoln University and then the like students going, Lincoln, Lincoln, <laughs> Lincoln. And then this guy goes at the University of Lincoln and then suddenly he just goes, they're here. And like zombies burst through the door and he starts like shooting them and stuff. It's just completely round. And then it's like University of Lincoln, you know. <laughs> well, we've got to watch that now Paul, at some point. <laughs> so, no, it is UCLan. It is uh, Central Lancashire, University of Central Lancashire. So, um. Yeah, nice. I mean, let's dive in and, and see. This is on the official BBC uh, Doctor Who YouTube channel, so it is an officially sort of endorsed thing. Wow, well. okay. That's a pretty big deal. Yeah, yeah. Bit of a bit of a labour of love. Uh, well, that's what Doctor Who fans do, isn't it? You know, that we've seen that from reconstructions and everything, haven't we? we we've seen the lengths people will go to for this show. <laughs> there there are no to... limits to what people will Some do. Some people will even start whole YouTube channels dedicated to watching Doctor Who. I know. Can you imagine? <laughs> 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 so, 
Some people will even start good YouTube channels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has been known. Can you imagine? <laughs> Unfortunately, um, viewers at home will have to imagine. <laughs> okay. I think it's got a little go. introduction at the beginning with a guy, Edward D'Souza, who was in the episode. Oh, nice. Hello. How does that sound? I'm Edward D'Souza. Lovely. And in 1965, nice. I was in an touch. episode of Doctor Who called Mission to the Unknown. I played Mark Corey, the hero, who is trying to stop a Dalek plan to conquer the universe. Sadly, this episode doesn't exist in the BBC's archives, but the staff, students and graduates of the University of Central Lancashire have worked tirelessly to recreate this episode and bring it back to life. Well, I hope you enjoy nice. it. Nice. But... <laughs> Beware the bargers. So I guess this was the easiest bit to do. <laughs> You'd assume so, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> they recreated it from scratch. <laughs> I mean, it, I, it's very impressive that someone went to the effort of like creating this whole set. and. Yeah, that's a good rocket, isn't it? Yeah. And the way it's sort of all been graded to make it look... Like a 1960s bit of filming. Yeah, it does look authentic, doesn't it? This is using the audio, right? They're kind of lip syncing it. No, I, I guess. think they, I think they, I think they are acting it. Oh, really? So, yeah. the, although, although the audio does exist, so you could listen to the full audio. So, I guess they've used the audio as a as, as a the guide. guide to no create use, it. I was going to say because their voices sound like how they look. Mm, sure, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> that was a dumb thing to say. But... <laughs> no, no, I get what you mean. Yeah. The Daleks invaded Earth a thousand years ago. That's right. Well, they have been active in our galaxy for some time now, but that doesn't mean they've exactly been... Is that referring to the Dalek invasion of Earth? In the last five yeah, I think so. Years, yeah. Yeah. Of over 70 in ninth galactic I'd love to see a timeline of all the times that Daleks invade Earth. Earth. Concern, yeah. I mean, his navigator spotted a... Sputtered on. <laughs> yeah, we're sputtered on a spatial. So, hello and welcome to our new regular feature of the Shallow Proclamation: sputtering on a spatial. <laughs> this guy kind of becoming zombified. Oh. <laughs> it's covered in candy floss. <laughs> Freighter XM2, Freighter XM2, come in please, come in please. Oh, that was well done, I just didn't see that coming. No. <laughs> well, the only place in the universe where Vargas grow naturally is the Daleks' own planet, Skaro. The Vargas are here, the Daleks The Vodkas. Too. The Vodkas. Yeah, there's a lot of natural vodka on Skaro. Oh, cool, we got some Daleks. So where did they get hold of these? To know, I mean, people. There are lots of people who built their own Daleks, so whether they were able to nab them from somewhere. Yeah. I mean, you've got the makings of a Dalek in your kitchen, so. Space control. Anything out there? Vargas. 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 They're closing in. You need to say they can move. Sorry, Leave sorry, him, okay. last Vargas. <laughs> This is really well done. This is much um, higher production value than I was expecting. Yeah. I thought it would be like a home movie or it's something. Like we've got. Right. No, no. I mean, it's, obviously these this guys are sort of film, film graduates, I guess. Maybe that was their, mm. their thing at uh, uni. I don't know. With the arrival of our ally Malfa, we are in a... Oh, cool. <laughs> no, it can't. <laughs> oh no, Golf Ball Man has arrived. <laughs> I mean, hard to tell whether Golf Ball Man is just basing his performance on the actual audio. I'd be interested to know because uh, <laughs> that was that was he, he was certainly going for it there, wasn't he? I'd love to see an interview of him. So yeah, I really decided to kind of make the role my own. Um... <laughs> the seven of us represent the greatest war force ever assembled. Conquest is assured Mars <laughs> Venus Jupiter 
The moon calling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> it's interesting to see the Daleks form an alliance. Because mm. I'm quite used to, in the modern era, the idea that the Daleks are kind of very independent and they just want their pure kind of master race. I suppose in more recent oh, so modern Who, we've seen them teaming up with others. But uh, yeah, it's cool to see that goes right back to Kill. here. Yeah. Victory! Oh. Now, I don't know if there's anything at the end of that. If there's a, I don't know if there's a little roundup at the end. It looks like there's a few minutes left, so maybe there is after the credits. So, um... Kind of ended on a cliffhanger there. Performance. Oh, Nicholas Briggs did the voices. Oh, right. So they actually got Nicholas Briggs, who does all the main voices on the modern series, doesn't he? Now, something that I have just clocked embarrassingly recently is that the Doctor isn't in it. Right, yeah, yeah. That's interesting, isn't it? I, I almost, yeah, I didn't really think anything of it for a lot of it. I was like, oh yeah, the Doctor and Vicky and Stephen will show up at some point. But no, yeah, not in it at all. Well, yeah, and maybe we can think about that a little bit. So yeah, it's the only, I've got some facts here. This is why I didn't want to say too much about it before it started, because I didn't want to give things away, like... Jodie Whittaker, um, what? And it, and it Gill, like... How, did, what did they, what were they? Oh, special thanks to... Uh, Edward D'Souza. So Edward D'Souza was the guy who introduced it there. Mandip Gill there, we know that name. Peter Purvis, there we go. Yeah, wow, uh, okay. Terry Nation Estate. Um, so yeah, lots of people involved there. I don't know if there is anything after this. No, <laughs> yeah. Tell me what you thought of it first. Let's, let's do that before we think about, I tell you a bit more about it. Yeah, I thought it was good. Um, I liked the fact that the Daleks formed an alliance with those other guys. It looked quite Star Wars-y almost, sort of cantina band, lots of weird aliens gathered around a table. But yeah. I quite like that stuff. Although 12 years earlier than Star Wars. so <laughs> Exactly, <laughs> you know? exactly. So Star Wars, what you should be saying is, Star Wars looks quite Mission to the Unknown-y. Yeah. <laughs> you should be saying. Absolutely. Now, he, he was a little bit wiggy, the golf ball man, but I kind of like that. He, he gave it everything... Um, the Daleks are invading the solar system. <laughs> Mars, <laughs> Venus, Jupiter, the moon. <laughs> I love how he ended on the moon. Like, that's the crowning pinnacle. <laughs> Got Jupiter, which is like was almost big enough to be a star, and then the moon. <laughs> it's, like, it's like we're going to take over America and China and Kent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's in terms of real estate. But hey, maybe the moons are very desirable. Maybe so. Who knows? Who knows? But, I uh... also like the plants um, and the Daleks using means to enact their invasion rather than just they go around shooting people. Mm. Um, I kind of like that, that the Daleks come up with other plans because it kind of makes it more interesting because it's like how are they going to invade it was very easy to watch because it was like you could immerse yourself in it because it wasn't like a a normal recon i suppose even the animated ones they were they were very watchable for galaxy 4 mm. but there was still a slight sense of i i don't quite feel like i'm watching a classic doctor who episode no sure whereas this definitely had that ring of truth to it i think yeah even though it was wasn't the original audio in a way it felt a lot closer to what the original probably was than any of the reconstructions we've seen so far i think mm. yeah. But, yeah yeah it certainly has that you? feel of authenticity to it yeah i really like i really enjoy it i mean i think it is really watchable and i was aware early on i was like oh we're not saying a lot you know, yeah. you don't want to force yourself to say things for the sake of saying things, but you also like, I'm just slightly immersed in what I'm watching and enjoying it. So that's, and that's the main thing really, isn't it? Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I don't know if you, I mean, you probably won't have twigged. So, so this is a one parter, but what we've got, we've got a four part story next, and then we get into the 12 part Dalek story, um, which we've talked about before, where only three episodes exist of um, the Dalek master plan. Uh, but this is basically supposed to be sort of a 
a pr- prelude to it, you know, like an intro to it to set it up. Yeah. Um, so it is, yeah, I mean, it's notable for a few reasons, as you kind of picked up, you know, it's the only Doctor Who, it's the only Doctor Who television story that doesn't feature the Doctor, any of the companions or the TARDIS yeah. um, at all. I think actually I saw it's the first, yeah, first ever story not to feature the TARDIS. There's only 11, uh, at the time this information I've got was written, it says there are only 11 stories in which the TARDIS doesn't appear in all of Doctor Who. Wow. Um, so just to throw those out there for, for the trivia people at home, uh, Doctor Who and the Silurians, the Mind of Evil, the Demons, the Sea Devils, Sontaran Experiment, Genesis of the Daleks, Midnight, The Lie of the Land, The Woman Who Fell to Earth, and Ascension of the Cybermen. So that's that's oh. re- up to relatively recent. So there may I don't know if that was this was written before Flux and all that. So maybe maybe they have a couple of episodes after that that finish the Tardis either. I don't know. Um, yeah, that that's pretty unique then, isn't it? Because I could name episodes where the Doctor is certainly more absent, like Blink and Love and Monsters and stuff. But this was, yeah, and, and no I suppose, Doctor at all. I suppose the Doctor doesn't feature in some of the in some of the Hartnell stories, does he? Like that's single, true. But but the difference is that they contain companions as well. This has none of the regular cast at all. And they're not even referenced. There's no mention of them there. Um, apparently, William Hartnell did get a credit on the screen for this because it was part of his contract to be credited for every story. Um, yeah. Whereas uh, Maureen O'Brien and Peter Purvis didn't get credited for it. Yeah, supposedly the episode came about because in the previous season, Planet of the Giants was reduced by one episode. From remember, if you don't remember, we said there was four episodes. They edited down into three. And so they kind of had an episode in hand and this is suggested that possibly it was for contractual reasons that they didn't have any of the main cast in it because they were only, you know, for whatever reasons, they weren't cast to appear or whatever. Um, but basically, um, Terry Nation, it says here, Terry Nation wrote the episode partially as an attempt to develop and sell the idea of the, a Dalek television series divorced from the larger Doctor Who universe. Mm. Um, the proposed series would have followed the adventures of the Space Security Service, an elite organisation tasked with hunting Daleks. Um, this approach can be seen in the short stories and comic strips written for 1965's The Dalek Outer Space Book. Um, an unmade pilot titled The Destroyers was written, but the series concept was never sold. Um, yeah, so I think he he was kind of, I think it was around this era that I think I'm right in thinking that it was Goldfinger had come out and James Bond had come quite big. Um, and hence you've got this kind of space security service. He even says, doesn't he, one of the characters licensed to kill. Um, I think he was trying to build this idea of a kind of uh, a, a kind of space going MI6, MI5 type thing um, yeah. who fight the Daleks. And then he, I know he wanted to kind of try and sell that um, as a bigger idea, maybe overseas to the States and things, but obviously it never took off. So this was kind of, it worked. I think it was filling a gap for the BBC, but it also worked from his point of view um to try and do that um yeah i mean it's like it seems like it's unlikely it'll ever be found because i think it says here that it was um so mission to the unknown this one and the dalek master plan which it kind of is setting up um are the only stories from the 1960s that were offered for overseas sale but were never purchased um interesting so the chances so often way the way things have been found is you know some doctor who episode turns up in a tv archive in a station in nigeria somewhere you know that kind of thing or in australia and you know where they've been sold and so the bbc have deleted their own copies but someone else has got one knocking around somewhere but so it just means the chances of that or this or the dalek master plan being found seem quite slim but you never know you never know we live in hope (laughs) absolutely yeah. Oh, no, yeah. That's really cool, though. So it's a bit of a pioneering episode in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, mind if we quickly re- watch the uh, Lincoln promo? We must. Since we have you got it. The this only reason what... we're showing this is that <laughs> this, this is Paul, what I keep confusing it with. Paul thought that the uh, the episode we just watched was actually reconstructed by the University of Lincoln rather than. Lancashire, um, but this is why you said Lincoln, right? Central Lancashire, Thomas. 
Central things. Lancashire. They so. don't want to, the people of Central Lancashire don't want to be confused with the people of Outer Lancashire. <laughs> <laughs> all, all, all Central <laughs> Lancashire people are in Lancashire, but not all Lancashire people are in Central Lancashire. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Where do you study? Pretty normal so far. Lincoln. <laughs> Lincoln. The University of their here. <laughs> 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 I mean that's brilliant, isn't it? I really hope that wasn't actually banned. Uh I think oh. I remember uh, the reason I think I get that confused is because I knew that guy, I think the guy who who did that video was like a film student at Lincoln. Right. And so it was a project he did for it. A bit like the Doctor Who thing was a project they did. They both begin with L. Um, sure. Yeah. I, yeah. I think I read as well at the time that he got into a lot of trouble with the university for having like kind of firearms on <laughs> on campus, all kinds of things. But I think the popularity of the video kind of overturned the university's disapproval initially. So yes. So there we go. Good stuff. Um, a little kind of uh, that's teed us up for the Dalek master plan. But we've got a few episodes to get through before that. Um, yeah. But yeah, let us know what you think of that, uh, this story. Let us know what you think of this version of it. There's the, also the um, animated version some of you might have seen. Some of you may have listened to the audio, watched the loose cannon reconstruction. Now, I think that there's at least three ways you can view view this. Um, and obviously, you can listen to it by itself as well. So lots of different ways. Um, let us know what you think of it and general thoughts. And uh, we will see you soon for episode one of The Myth Makers. But until then, bye-bye. Goodbye. Oh, 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 oh,